We're going to get to the latest holiday sales data with an Adobe expert in just a moment. But we're beginning today with that new COVID variant that became an overnight concern around the world. We're all waking up to it today. First of all, Belgium today confirming a case of the new virus strain in a person from abroad. And health officials say it could take several weeks to determine just how dangerous this new coronavirus variant is. Advisors to the World Health Organization are speaking today to plan for the new variant, which they say was first identified on November 11th and has now spread to almost 100 cases there. The new mutation caused stock markets to swoon and led the European Union to recommend a pause in flights to South Africa and the surrounding region. It's good that the member states uh, are acting rapidly. This is the aim. This is what we want uh, them uh, to do. What is the purpose of this meeting and what is the purpose of our call to, um, uh, to meet and discuss measures is because precisely we want to, to have fast and coordinated and consistent measures uh, in place because we want to avoid that there are loopholes to which the virus finds its way uh, in Europe. And joining us now is Bloomberg Intelligence senior pharmaceutical analyst Sam Fizelli. Uh, Sam's latest piece on Bloomberg.com is called Should We Worry About the New Virus Variant? Yes. Uh, Sam, really eye-opening report right there from you. Uh, really concerning stuff, though, too. So thank you so much for, for being here. First of all, is this an overreaction, what we're seeing around the world? People are really concerned. But can you break down just how concerning this new variant is in your mind? Sure, and thanks for having me on this afternoon. Uh, obviously, any new mutation or new variant that comes along that becomes a variant of interest or variant of concern has to be something that we take seriously. This particular one has 32 mutations in the spike series, uh, uh, sequence in the protein that it uses to attach to human cells. And that's why I think a lot of scientists are worried about, especially where those mutations are. But frankly, we don't have the data yet. It's very possible that vaccines, although they may lose some efficacy or effectiveness against this variant, still provide some protection, certainly against severe uh, disease and death. But that's data that we need to get, and that, unfortunately, is going to take several weeks. Well, why are those mutations so concerning, Sam? Uh, can you break down that for us, especially for people who are vaccinated, who thought, you know, they, they would be uh, immune to this? Uh, yeah, sure. And, and they, you know, I, I am one of those people. Right. So uh, we don't know yet exactly what happens to immunity that, that, that the vaccine gives you or indeed a prior infection. So what you have to think about here is where are these mutations? We have been watching this virus mutate and develop several variants, seven or eight of them that are well studied now, which is how people can take, tell scientists can tell. If mutations are in this region of the spike protein, it is more likely that we'll be able to avoid or evade our uh, antibodies. Now, of course, you've got the other arm of the immune system, the cellular arm of the immune system, which works in a totally different way and is likely to continue to be protective. We just have to get the data every time. And we will have this again, I'm pretty sure, another variant, another form. Every time a new form comes along, we need to study it and learn how it reacts or how our immune system interacts with it. And so then we don't really know uh, of these cases that we do know, Sam, do we know how severe people uh, were getting infected? Do we know if they're being sent to the hospital? Are those still all unknowns at this point in time? Yeah, I don't have any data to, to, to speak to that. So I really I don't think we should think about it or comment right now because there's so many other things that drive response to the virus or response in terms of severity of disease or need to hospitalize. And, and, and really, we need a lot more data before we can make any decisions or uh, or the conclusions on that. Well, and Sam, when, we, when you talk about decisions this morning, as we mentioned, there's a lot of European governments that are acting really quick to put restrictions in place. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, what do you make of that? Is it their concern that this could maybe turn into a bigger outbreak or are they just being precautious? I mean, what do you think? I think this is a lot more to do with, with the need to be, um, uh, to, be, to be able to control and stop the uh, the, the further introduction of the virus into the various countries. Uh, and that's what is, what is important here. Um, how much they help, I really don't, don't know. I mean, we already know that there are cases in Belgium, as you rightly said, they had fine one. I'm pretty sure, as much as I can be, that the virus has already uh, potentially spread outside, as we know, Hong Kong also. So, but, but it gives countries a bit more time 
uh, to manage this. And I really want to congratulate the South African scientists and authorities for mm. acting really quickly and openly with this, uh, with this information. What do you think drug makers are doing at this point in time, Sam, uh, as we're learning more and more about potentially the, the uh, virus attacking the spike proteins? Uh, do you think they are thinking about developing new vaccines? Are they looking at the ones that we currently have and seeing what they, what they could do? I mean, is there anything that they can do to get ahead, essentially, at this point? I think I'm going to say all of the above. We already know that if you boost people their, uh, with the same vaccine that we have today, their blood, the antibodies that that vaccine creates, can neutralize all of the variants that are out there at the minute. Perhaps to slightly lesser mm -hmm. degree, but generally pretty strongly. So it's possible that the same will hold true for the B11529 variant. I don't know if the WHO has given it a new name or not yet. Um, and that's hopefully what's going to be the case. Now, if we need a new variant vaccine, uh, the companies, the mRNA companies, and also the adenoviral companies should be able to develop an amended version, as they have said and repeated again, within the 100-day time frame, which, of course, will then need testing. So, but that, that would be where, but I, I'm hoping that our booster shots will give us enough cover to manage any potential escape from vaccines um, until we think about how to develop the next version of this vaccine. So for people who haven't gotten their boosters, do you think this uh, basically encourages more people to do so? Do you, do you potentially see more people getting the boosters? Would that be protection at this point in time? Um, so, again, we need the data, but, I, but if we go by what I've just said with regards to what happened before when we boosted with the, with the current vaccine um, and we got a good reaction in terms of neutralizing all the known variants, if that ends up being the case also for this variant, even if it's a, at a slightly reduced level, then you would want people to make sure that they get their uh, boosters. And let's not forget that the majority of viruses we're going to see out there are still Delta. And we don't want to uh, let up against that either, which is where the booster shots were coming in mostly. Sam, is there anything you would recommend people who are potentially traveling this holiday season do? I, I mean, it, it, is it taking precautions again? Is it wearing masks again? Is it isolating? I mean, I, I wonder. And I know there's not a lot that we know about this new mutation, but what would you say? I mean, the mask wearing, I think, should have never been something that we let up on. It's such a relatively easy thing to do. Um, that, that, and a low cost thing to do that, that really people should have never given up on that. Now, obviously, in certain settings, etc., you can't keep wearing a mask in a restaurant at events where you're with friends and you want to eat and talk, etc. So the question is, what can we do beyond that? I really don't think that we should massively change behavior uh, at the minute and, and just live our lives as normal as we can within the rules and within understanding that we are at risk of, of catching an infection even if we're vaccinated, though that reduces the risk of severe disease. But I think um, masking is the, is the simplest and easiest way of dealing with this. And of course, vaccination. So this is essentially, Sam, uh, I mean, COVID is, is here to stay, is sort of what it sounds like. Um, is that what you're saying? Uh, well, yeah, I think we've been saying that all along. And, and, and you know, I, I'm just a, uh, an analyzer of other people's research in terms of the scientific aspects, if you talk to the scientists and think about what they've been saying, you'll find that majority of people, well, all the people that I follow and, 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 and I, re and I uh, regard highly, are of the view that this virus is not going away, just like none of the and other coronaviruses has ever really left. Right, that's true. Sam, sorry, just in 20 seconds, I wanted to ask you, we do have this meeting that we're going to wait uh, to hear from today. What is it that you want to hear from uh, these researchers and these experts? Um, I, well, I want to I want to hear, first of all, what their view is with regards to the to the current state of affairs in terms of of infections in South Africa, how quickly it's spread and any more analysis. Uh, although I really don't think that there's much more they could have done within the space of the 12, 16, 18 hours since the uh, uh, press briefing that the um, South African Health Department held last night. So I really don't think there's much more than that, apart from. Tell us a bit more about how widespread this has got to within South Africa, which gives us a hint of the potential transmissibility of this virus. All right. Sam Fazelli, Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Pharmaceutical Analyst.